All right, Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai. Uh, once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakah Kadash. And uh, hopefully, you find this video edifying as well as exhorting. Okay, and pretty much this is a video to combat the stupidity of the ISUPK okay the ISUPK who basically teaches that if you if your background is so called african then you're a hamite and uh you see the brother here on screen this is the brother Bakwa Maf and uh he's responding to that by doing this video is Bakwa Maf a hamite because his background happens to be so-called African, which he's going to explain in the video. So earlier he was, this is a, a still, well, I got it paused. Uh, I, I actually got the video paused, so it's not really a still. Um, earlier he was on live and I jumped on his comment board and um, added a couple of comments uh, supporting uh, what he was saying, that you have Israelites that were scattered among the so-called Africans. As a matter of fact, um, uh, when you go to the book of Luke, the 21st chapter. Okay, let me put this on. Uh, do not disturb. Keep forgetting to do that. So bear with me. All right. When you go to the book of uh, Luke, let's go there real quick. Luke, the uh, 21st chapter, it speaks about the diaspora, right? Luke, the 20, what does the word diaspora mean? The scattering, the scattering of our nation. That's when Jerusalem fell, you know, around 67 going into 70 AD. And by the time 73 AD rolled around, Jerusalem was totally conquered, totally fallen. And you had many Israelites that fled from the land of Israel, fleeing Roman persecution. In the book uh, From Babylon to Timbuktu, written by, um, uh, sometimes I get this auth the author wrong, uh, Babylon to Timbuktu is written by, uh, matter of fact, you know what, let me, well, I got some information, so I don't really want to lose it, but uh, those of you that are watching, please put the author of the book from Babylon to Timbuktu, right now his name escapes me, put it in the comment section so the viewers can be edified, because right now his name is, escapes me. I know it's not Rudolf R. Windsor. Okay, so uh, I forgot the other author's name who wrote the book From Babylon to Timbuktu. Anyway, in that book on, on page 84, right, that I do remember, <laughs> on page 84, it could have been Rudolf R. Windsor, I don't remember. But anyway, in page 84, it speaks about the scattering of, to quote the uh, passage from the book, uh, black Jewish slaves. Now we know we're not black; we're different shades of brown. But in the book, it says the uh, the slave markets were filled with black Jewish slaves. All right. Um, now, going back to seventy A.D., uh, they fled out of the land of Israel, fleeing Roman persecution into predominantly the north and west parts of Africa. Okay, that's the point. And some fled as far as um, the Britons, you know, England, Ireland, Scotland, some Israelites, and they fled as far as far east as uh, Japan and China. Okay, so that's part of our history, our Israelite history, the scattering of our people, right? Now, in the book of Luke 21, uh, Luke 21 and uh, 24, it says this, and they shall the day of the Israelites, they shall fall by the edge of the sword, which was swung by the Romans, right? 
and shall be led away captive into all nations. Again, and from the book, Babylon the Timbuktu, page 84, you'll read that passage right there, okay? And led away captive as slaves into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, these Gentiles are talking about the other nations, and they have trodden down our land. Um, uh, in particular, the so-called Jew, Jews, the Ish people, the small hatters, and the so-called Arabs, the Ishmaelites. Both of them are fighting over our land, okay? The land that belongs to us, the land of Israel. When you go in the book of Isaiah, the uh, first chapter, let's read that real quick. Isaiah, the first chapter, it speaks about how our land is desolate. Well, let's read it. Isaiah, the first chapter, the uh, seventh verse, your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. What's an example of that? Well, go back to 67, going into 70 AD. That's how the Romans took down our land. That's how the Romans took down our city, the city of Jerusalem. They burned it, burned it down to the ground, man. Okay, that reminds me of the scripture, raise it, raise it even to the foundation thereof. Now that happened during the time of the Babylonians and it happened again during the time of uh, the so-called Romans, which were Edomites. And by the way, when you go back to the time of the Babylonians, when the Babylonians burnt down our city, um, it, was, it was the Edomites that was helping them. The Edomites were helping the, the so-called Babylonians. That's why when you go in the book of Psalm, uh, the book of Psalm 137, is it? I'm going to come back to Isaiah. Let's just go back. Or let's just go to Psalm 137. Psalm 137 and uh, 7. It says, Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. And this is when the Babylonians had burned down our city. And the Edomites were helping them. Okay? Uh, again, Psalm 137 and 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of of Jerusalem who said raise it raise it even to the foundation thereof burn it raise it means erase it or burn it down that's what raise it means erase it that's where you get the word erase from when you erase something you are destroyed you get rid of it O daughter of Babylon that's one of the reasons why the Edomites have the title of O daughter of Babylon which the word Babylon just means confusion that's what Esau represents he represents confusion okay O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. That's Esau, the Edomites. Happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. And again, the Edomites burnt down our temple in, uh, you know, going to 67 AD, going into 70 AD. Our temple was burnt down. The Jerusalem was burnt down pretty much, which prompted many Israelites to flee out of that land. And many of them fled into the north and west parts of Africa. So we have, a, 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 we have deep roots going back to Africa and even deeper roots going back to Israel, okay? So I guess the I, ISUPK, they don't consider that. That's the point. All right, so um, let's go back to Isaiah, the first chapter, the seventh verse. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. And I just gave you a little of the history. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. There you go. Now, who are the strangers? Now, we just read in Luke, uh, it says that, matter of fact, let's refresh our memory. It says that um, uh, Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's the other nations. Now, Isaiah 1 and 7 backs that up. It says that our land, strangers devour it in our presence. So who are those strangers that, that that don't belong in that land? Who are the strangers? Well, the Ish people, because their land is really Petra, the land of Edom, which is south of the land of, of uh, Judah, the province of Judah. Their land is the land of Edom, which is south of the province of Judah. That's where they belong. You know, Mount Seir, that's their land. Mount Seir, Petra, Basra, okay, those were cities that they built. I'm talking about the Edomites that they built when they were living in that land. That's their land. Which, by the way, their land is going to be taken taken away. That's 
That's pursuant to the book of Obadiah. And this is going to happen to them after a thousand years of slavery. After serving us a thousand years of slavery, their land, first of all, they're going to be rounded up and set on fire. And you won't see no Edomites no more. And their land is going to be given to the, uh, the province of Judah. Okay, and this is pursuant to Obadiah the first chapter. Okay, Obadiah the first chapter. And uh, let's see. Obadiah the first chapter. And the, uh, let's start at the 17th verse. It says, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Mount Zion represents Israel. And there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. So, the, us Israelites are going to possess the possessions, especially of the nation of Edom. We're going to possess them as slaves and their land. Okay, let's read. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau a stubble, and they shall kindle in them. And devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. So this is after a thousand years of slavery. So what's going to happen to their land? The land of Edom, which is south of Judah. South of the land of Judah, or the parish of Judah. Let's keep reading. And they of the south, who's the day of the south? Judah. Just look at the map of Israel. You'll see, uh, uh, you'll see the parish of Judah. All right, where the, where the Judites live, which Judah being the head tribe of the nation of Israel, you'll see that they're the very south of the land of Israel. That's why they were also known as the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom consisted of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Then you had the northern kingdom, which consisted of Ephraim and the rest of the tribes. Okay, so it says, they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau. What does that mean? Their land. So, you know, and that's that's a that's fitting justice right there, man. For all the hell that Judah caught from from especially from the Edomites, that's that 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 proves that the the heavenly Father Yahweh, through His Son Yahweh Shai, is completely just, completely righteous, man. Okay, not only are the Edomites going to be done away with, their land is going to be given or annexed. That's a good word for it. Their land is going to be annexed. To the uh, uh, to the land of um, uh, uh, you know Judah, the land of uh, uh, yeah the land of Judah, okay, it's going to be joined to the land of Judah. So so all praises <laughs> to Yahweh Bashem Yahshai for that. That's what these Edomites get, man. And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim. And the fields of Samaria and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. Right. In other words, the, the whole nation, as a matter of fact, you know a good scripture for that? I, uh, Isaiah 14 and 1. Let's get that real quick. Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. See, so us Israelites, we're going back to our own land. You know, Judah's going back to their land. Benjamin, Levi. Simeon, you know, you name it, Ephraim, Gad, Reuben, you know, Issachar. We're going back to the land of Israel, brothers. All right, brothers and you few sisters that watch these videos, that's where we're going back. We're going back to the land of Israel in style, mind you. We were kicked out of there by the Edomites, 70 AD, but we're going back in style. And by the way, in the book of the Apocrypha, it speaks about the land of Israel being the Most High's chosen pit, as in chosen land. That's his favorite land. Of all lands, his favorite land is the land of Israel. So the land of Israel is going to be like Palestine. Well, it's going to be like the Garden of Eden. That's what I meant to say, which was known as Palestine. It's going to be like the Garden of Eden, man, which the Garden of Eden is the land of Israel, in particular Jerusalem. All right? But the whole land of Israel is going to be the, going to be like ultimately like heaven on earth. OK. I, I can't even begin to to add to it, you know, how it's going to be. 
Well, a good example is um, Isaiah the 35th chapter. If we go in the same book, Isaiah the 35th chapter, let's read that real quick. Uh, Isaiah 35 and 1. Now remember, back in Isaiah 1, it says that our country is desolate. Let's read it. Isaiah 1 and 7, your country is desolate, your cities are burned with fire, your land de strangers devoured in your presence. So that land ain't never been the same. But pursuant to Isaiah 35, it says, The wilderness and the solitary place, that's the land of Israel, shall be glad for them. Who's the them? Us. When we go back, remember Isaiah 14 and 1, the Lord is going to bring us back to the land of Israel, right? He shall set us in our own land, right? So when we go back to that land, that land is going to be blessed. Okay, the wilderness and the solitary place, that's how it is right now, shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. So when we go back to the land of Israel, that land is going to be blessed, man, because we're the blessed people. We're the real people of the Lord. We're the real Israelites. It shall blossom abun abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. What's the glory of Lebanon? Trees. Lebanon was known for its trees, its beautiful, tall, towering trees, okay? So our land is going to be beautified once again, all right? The land of Israel. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our power. Absolutely. They're going to know the power of, of Yahweh Bar Shem Shai when he beautifies that land once again. He's going to make that land like an ultimate paradise, the land of Israel, when we go back there, pursuant to Isaiah 14 and 1. Again, you know, uh, Isaiah 14 and 1. Let's read that. I want to refresh your memory. Isaiah 14 and 1. For those of you that are new, that is. Isaiah 14 and 1. So this is a future prophecy. This hasn't even happened yet. Isaiah 14 and 1. The Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. And set them, that's us, in their own land. And when he does that, that land is going to be beautified. Beautified beyond our wildest dreams. Okay? And I just read it to you in Isaiah, the 35th chapter. So I hope you were edified. But anyway, going back to us being scattered. Luke 21, 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So uh, going back to 67 AD, going into 70 AD, 73 AD, uh, you had many Israelites that fled out of the land of Israel, fleeing Roman persecution. And one of the spots that they fled to was the north and west parts of Africa. So we have a huge tradition, tradition with Africa. Okay. So for you to say that any Israelite, because their background goes back to Africa, saying that they're a Hamite, you, you, come on, you're a moron. Simply put, you're a moron. So now, this is Bukwa Amaf's response to that madness that ISUPK was saying. So I'm going to play the video, and let's check it out. Peace and blessings to the elect. And um, uh, you're probably wondering about the title. Why, why would I put a title like that? Um, no, I don't think I'm a Hamite. But the reason I put that title is um, I just I just got done watching the video. It was a short clip. Uh, it was put up by um, the brother Yashalom, GMS Watchman. And um, it was basically you had uh, this individual from ISUPK, I believe it was. But the title was something along the lines of um, ISUPK says the Igbo, uh, Ashanti, and I believe it was Yoruba are, are just plain uh, uh, Africans or something to that effect. And, um, yeah, and I watched it, you know, and I'm listening to the dude, you know, he's, yeah, he's talking about, you know, you, you got people that say the, um, the Igbos, you know, or Israelites, they just some plain old Nigerians, you know, or the Ashantis, they just some plain old fufu eating Africans and yada yada. Speaking of the so-called Nigerians, uh, a lot of them, there's, there's some of the most talented people on the planet earth, man. Okay. The so-called Nigerians. All right. And I'm going to give you some examples in this lesson. OK. And so um, the, the, the spirit jumped on me. I said, all right, low one, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do a video um, 
you know, sort of in response to that, because uh, myself and my brother, all right, we are um, Ashantis. You know, our parents, both our parents are Ashanti. So we're, you know, directly descended from that. And, I mean, we're in the truth, you know, right? We're teaching the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And, um, you know, I nobody's ever called me a heathen, right? Oh. Yeah, so how the hell could they be heathens when, like he said, they're teaching the truth? This knowledge, this truth is only given to the nation of Israel. See, this is what happens when you have a guy uh, over there at the UPK teaching madness like this. You, you try to corrupt the faith of of, uh, of uh, one who believes in this knowledge and this truth. And that's why eventually your mouth is going to be stopped. You know, you over there at the UPK that's teaching that garbage. Uh, let's go to the book of Psalms 147. The only ones that get the knowledge of of this truth, the understanding of this truth, are Israelites, man. And I'm gonna, that's not just my words, here's the scripture to back it up. Psalm 147, 19 and 20. It says, he sureth his word unto Jacob. Sureth means what? The understanding, he gives the understanding unto Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel, as in the truth. He have not dealt so with any nation, see? And as for his judgments, as in the truth, the knowledge of the truth, as for his judgments, they have not known them, praise ye the Lord. So why does the brother Bequaf know them and his brother? And like you just heard him say, that background is a so-called Ashanti, which goes back, I believe, to Nigeria, which according to ISUPK means you're a Hamite. So why, how do you explain the fact that Bequaf and his brother knows the truth, they understand the truth? Because they're Israelites, man. And what backs that up is Psalm 147. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt... How much plainer does it have to be? The 20th verse. He have not dealt so with any nation. He have not dealt so with any nation. That's any other nation other than the nation of Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them praise ye the lord come on how do you get around that that's bank right there man okay now let's go to another scripture my glory let's bring that one out my glory i think that's in isaiah 42 but i am not sure but we're gonna find out because you know how we do isaiah 42. Yep, I was right. Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. Uh, I just go right to the point. Isaiah 42 and 8. I am the Lord. His name is Yahweh, right? His son's name is Yahweh Shai. That is my name and my glory. What's his glory? Or what's an example of his glory? This knowledge, this truth, the understanding of this Bible. That's his glory. That's part of his glory, right? He said, my glory will I not give to another, another what? Another nation. Wait a minute, you got two thirds of his own people, Israelites, that's not going to get his glory right now. Two thirds, the only ones that's going to get his glory is the elect. Go read Romans 11 and 7. What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it and the rest were blinded. They have obtained what? His glory, which is this knowledge, this truth. So you got two-thirds of Israelites that's not going to get it, but some heathen somewhere, they're going to get it? They're going to get his glory? Does that make any sense? No, it does not. It sounds like confusion to me, and we all know the scriptures say that the Heavenly Father is not the author of confusion. Okay? And that group, ISUPK, they're totally confused. Okay? <laughs> they're totally confused. Anyway, Isaiah 42 and 8, I am the Lord that is my name and my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise, what's his praise? This knowledge is truth. To graven images. And we know, wait a minute, Psalm 96 and 5, we know that the other nations, in particular the Hamites, they worship other gods. They, 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 they worship uh, other gods. They worship idols. So does Israel, but the nations, well, let's just read the scripture. 
naturally the nations worship other idols. Here it is right here. Uh, Psalm 96 and 5. For the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. And that's why the, the Heavenly Father comes down so heavy on Israel, because Israel was created to not worship any other gods, but the God, which his name is Yahweh. You go in the book of Exodus 20. All right, Exodus 20 and 1. And the Heavenly Father spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which his name is Yahweh, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. See? So that made us special. That made us Israelites special. That we only worship one God. As opposed to the other nations that worship many gods. Uh, let's go to Deuteronomy 6 and 4, is it? Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Let's read that. Uh, it says this. Hear, O Israel, the nation of Israel, the Lord, Yahweh, our God, is one Lord. Right. So we only worship one power. And we worship him through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. All right. And now the Heavenly Father Yahweh has set up Yahweh Shai to be worshipped. That is scriptural. Right. Okay. So. Uh, so we just read Isaiah 42 and 8. Let's read it again. I am the Lord. That is my name and my glory will I not give to another. That's plain. Neither my praise to graven images. There you go. So, let's move on. Or Hamite. So, that's why I put the um, the title there, which is not just me. I just put that in there just, you know, as a, you know, a response uh, title. But you have a lot of brothers, teachers, prophets, okay, that, that are pushing the word of the Lord now that are from uh, different parts of Africa, that are from Nigeria. You have... Yeah, like the brother, um, the brother you see here on screen, um, his background, uh, the brother Yashalom, who he referenced, Bakwamaf referenced in his channel, GMS Watchman, his background is so-called African. And I, I, I see that brother every week, you know, when I go to camp. That's one of the coolest brothers around, man. That brother is definitely an Israelite, okay? So the point is, man, you guys that are spreading this disinformation, eventually, man, as a matter of fact, let's bring in the scripture, Matthew 12 and 36. Eventually, the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahusha is going to move on you. And like Yahweh Shai said, he's going to remove your candlestick out of, out of its place. You know, the elect out of I, ISUPK need to be extracted and that whole group needs to be dismantled because that's an embarrassing group, man. You want to talk about embarrassment. ISUPK, they, they, they never fail to embarrass themselves, man. Uh, Matthew 12 and 36. Let's read that. Matthew 12 and 36. Let's see what that says. Uh, but I say unto you that every idle word... By the way, these are the words of Yahweh Shai. You clearly see these words are written in red, right? Yahweh Shai said this. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak... They shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. So that's serious, man. It's serious business. You better watch what you say. You better make sure you, you're teaching the right doctrine, man. Which a lot of these dudes, they don't care. They they just say whatever comes to their mind. Speaking of ISUPK, you had one of the, one of those dudes over there that said, if I say John the Baptist is a plate of fish, pass me the hot sauce. What kind of what what? After hearing that, man, you should not just walk away from that group. You should sprint from that group. Okay? <laughs> I mean, come on, man. <laughs> Let me say that again. One of their members said, look, if I say, and if anybody should find that video, please put it in the comment section. All right? He said, he actually said this. Right? Like Elder Yashuamba, he had that series. I don't know if he still does it. Uh, the lowest point in Israel. That was one of the lowest points in Israel. When this, this Negro, when he made that statement, that's what he is, a Negro. When he made that statement, uh, if I say John the Baptist is a plate of fish, pass me the hot sauce. <laughs> Nuff said, man. Like the so-called so Jamaicans say, Nuff said, man. Nuff said. All right, you don't need to add to that. That just shows you where their level is at. Okay, I'm talking about the ISUPK and, and the General Johanna 
Did he rebuke that guy for saying that? Oh, hell no. He's probably proud that that dude said that. Anyway, Matthew 12 and 37. For by thy words, thou shalt be justified. So you guys who are teachers, you're supposed to be representing this gospel. You better watch what you say. At least Matthew 12 and 36 come down heavy upon you, man. Drop on you like a ton of lead, man. For by thy words, thou shalt be justified. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. So you better watch your words. Okay? Teach the right thing, man. Do some research. Pray to the Heavenly Father. Go on the fast. But make sure you represent this gospel correctly. You know, rightly. Like the scriptures say, rightly, like the Apostle Paul told Timothy. Rightly dividing the word of truth. All right? Uh, let me see if I missed the scripture. Nope. No, I didn't. Let's go back to the video. I have a lot of brothers that are from Nigeria. You have a lot of brothers that are from Ghana. That are uh, Ashantis and, and, and right. you know, from the various different tribes over there. And as a matter of fact, <clears throat> you have people in there that know that they're Israelites. They know that, especially the um, the, the the nobility, the chiefs and the kings and the, the, you know, when you go to their areas, they have records and they go, they know that they go back um, to the, uh, the Israelites. You know, mm -hmm. so the question is, am I a Hamite? Or is my brother a Hamite? Are right, the rest of the brothers? Man, you can look at this brother. Look, he does not have the spirit of a Hamite. Not at all. Okay, if, hell, if he never even mentioned it, I would have never thought that his, that he was a so-called Ashanti, he and his brother. Okay? Until they mentioned it. All right? These men are Israelites. All right? So, ISUPK, you need, like I said I was going to say it, you need, stop it. Stop it. All right? Stop it. Stop the bullshit. Stop it. That are, um, that are Nigerian, so-called Nigerian or so-called Ghanaian or, you know, uh, descended of that. Are we uh, Hamites? Because that would be a very interesting thing, wouldn't you say? <laughs> right? If I'm a Hamite. Well, if, if you're a Hamite, my brother, then the scripture, then the Mosai is a liar. Wait a minute. Is it not written? The most, look, we already read the scripture. He said his glory he will not give to another, Right. Now, we already read the scripture. So, can the Most High lie? Is he a liar? Well, let's see. Let's see. Numbers 23 and 19. Numbers 23 and 19. Uh, it says this. The Heavenly Father is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Have he said and shall he not do it? Have he spoken and shall he not make it good? Now he said, let's go back, let's refresh our memory here. He said that his glory he will not give to another. Isaiah 42, and what is it, 19? Isaiah 42 and 19, no. Isaiah 42, maybe it's previous verses. Isaiah 42 and 8, I'm sorry, Isaiah 42 and 8. I am the Lord, that is my name. And my glory, this is what he said. We know what his glory is. This knowledge is true, especially the deep hidden mysteries, right? The deep hidden mysteries that the Apostle Paul said is spiritually discerned. Did not the Apostle Paul say that, the, that these deep hidden mysteries of the Bible is spiritually discerned, spiritually hidden? It's only given to the elect of the nation of Israel. That's part of his glory. He said, the Heavenly Father said, my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images, which is what the other nations worship, especially the Hamites, the real Hamites. All right. They worship idols. They have many gods. OK, so come on, man. So if this brother is a Hamite, then that would mean the most is a liar. <laughs> come on, man. Stop it. Stop it. Stop the bullshit. What business do I got teaching the word of the Lord? Exactly. Right now, I'm sure there's, there's probably individuals that didn't know. All right. Uh, uh, uh. And I know this brother. I know his spirit. I don't know him, know him, but I can see in the spirit, man, that brother would explode if he couldn't teach the gospel, if he couldn't teach the word. This brother right here, and it, this man right here, and his brother, if they couldn't teach the word, they'd explode. Okay, because these men are these men are, fu are fiercely diligent. Okay, all right, all right. You know what Jeremiah said? Jeremiah said his, the word was, was like a burning heat inside of him. He couldn't contain himself. 
Okay? <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm laughing because there's a song by John Lee Hooker. It's called Boogie Children. Go check that song out. There's a line where it goes, uh, 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 I'm trying to remember it. He said, uh, in the song, he said, uh, he said, uh, leave that boy alone. Whatever you got in him, got to come out. Hold up. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, no, you know what? I got some information, so I, I don't want to. You go check it out, though. Boogie Children by uh, John Lee Hooker. There's a line where it goes like that. He said, leave that boy alone. Whatever he got in him, got to come out. <laughs> well, that's that's my bad right here. Whatever he got in him, got to come out. What he got in him? He got the word of Yahweh Hashem Yah Shai. It got to come out, man. You know. Um, probably didn't know that I was I was a Shanti, right? So why why how how, how 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 I, thought... I didn't know until you said it. I didn't know. I was thought you was just a plain old so called black American. All right, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yo, those guys at ISUPK, they need to stop, man. Really. Stop it. Stop it. Stop the bullshit. The name of the Lord was dreadful among the heathen. You know, I pray to Yahweh by Shem Yahushai every night, right? That's it. And Lord willing, you know, I do videos that edify you brothers and sisters. Yes, you do, brother. Yes, you do. Absolutely. Um, that's the point I was going to make. Um, uh, he says he prayed. There's a point I was going to make, man. Kind of escaped me that quick. Um, anyway, maybe it'll come back to me. So, what business does a so or not a so called, but what business does a Hamite have teaching the word of the Lord? Why would the Lord allow that? Exactly. Okay, and then the reason I'm doing this is because it's to show you when Jake makes statements like that, and they say, "Oh, yeah, you know these the the the, the they, these people are Hamites, and you can't say the Israelites, and you can't say the Israelites." They're, they're not they're not speaking in reality because you have a lot of individuals that you walk amongst that you say, oh, Jake, oh, look at Jake. Oh, look at Jake this. Oh, look at Jake that. Whether they're athletes or musicians or whatever the case is, that go back to these same individuals or these same groups that you were saying are Hamites. Absolutely. And I can back you up, my brother. I'm glad you said that. I didn't even know he was going to go there. Perfect time to bring in this information. This is why I, I did I didn't go to, uh, didn't uh, use Google because I had this queued up. I didn't want to lose it. So I typed in, because um, in this brother's live uh, lesson, I typed in about the rapper Nas and Elder Pastor was the first to really bring that out. Truth be told, he talked about the rapper Nas. He was one of the greatest rappers that, that you know, he's still living, that lived, the rapper Nas. And um, his father, is uh has nigerian roots and i'm about to show it to you and i put that comment in his live feed and i also said that can any of them clowns at isupk rap the rap as good as nas the answer is no rap nas would take all every last one of them clowns over there in isupk take them on and, and wrap circles around them nas is, is very excellent at what he does okay this is nas right here the rapper nas uh, so I typed in, was Nas background Nigerian? And this is what came up. It says, American rapper, musician Nas is a favorite for many Nigerians, especially after many fans found out that his family members have their roots in Nigeria. Ooh. So wait a minute, ISUPK. Is this brother here, is he a, a Hamite? Huh? Nas? Is he a Hamite? And look at him, he's hugging his father. Which, that's all right, man. Not too many so-called black men hug their father. And by the way, you brothers out there, man, you know, you brothers that got something with your with your pops and he's still living, you better go make peace with your pops, man. Make peace with your father. That's the smartest thing you can do. I don't care what your father's done to you. You should know whatever he's done to you because he's under the curses. You should know about the curses. So you go to your father and you be the bigger man. You be the better man. You make peace with your father. Make peace with your father, okay? As it is written, honor thy father and thy mother so that thy days may be long upon the planet Earth. One of the reasons why uh, Christopher Wallace, a.k.a. Biggie Smalls, one of the reasons why he got popped because he boldly on, a, on, a, on one of them rap songs he did, I forgot the, the name of the song, somebody put it in the comment section. 
he talked about his father being a he, he said his, the faggot took the back way out some shit like that he, he he put down his father okay you don't do that shit man that's your father you came out of his nutsack man Be, think about it because of your father you were israelite okay so never ever never ever never ever put down your father man don't do it man all right, go to your father. I don't care what he's done to you. And you know, Jake has a problem with, that, with, with pops. Go to pops, make peace with that man. That's the smartest thing you can do in this knowledge. Make peace with that man. Make peace with your father, okay? I'm telling you, make peace with your father. Call your father up. You know, if you don't know where your father is, then that's something different. But if you can get in touch with your father, call him up and say, hey, dad, or however you call him, and say, you know, in the, you know, I didn't understand you, I hated you, whatever, but I just want to tell you, I love you. You're my father. Well, why you love me? You're my father. That's why. And then call it a day, man. Yeah, how about Shemir Shah will bless you for that, man? Okay? I'm telling you, do it. All right? I got a blessing from my father. My father called me and, and he said, God will bless you, son. God will play. He kept saying it. I was like, and, and, and I, growing up with my father, my father never was into so-called religion or God. And I never even mentioned about God. So I was stunned when he said that, man. <laughs> you know, so I'm telling you, you make peace with your father, man. Make peace with your father. Anyway, uh, American rapper, musician Nas is a favorite for many Nigerians, especially after many fans found out that his family members have their roots in Nigeria. There you go. The multiple award-winning rapper is the son of popular American guitarist and singer Olu Dara Jones. Now, Olu Dara Jones, he was born Charles Jones. I think it was Charles Jones, but he, he, he changed his name to Olu Dara, which is Yoru, Yoru, uh, uh, Yorubian, I, I guess that's how you say it, Yoruba, Yorubian, dialect which means god is good look it up okay yoruba is one of the many tribes from nigeria see these guys at isubk they don't do their research all they do is just run their mouth and eat and eat uh, uh, plates of fish with hot sauce that's all they do okay run their mouth and eat plates of fish with hot sauce that's why my man compared john the baptist the greatest prophet that lived outside of yahweh of course even yahweh said that that's why he he uh, he um he compared John the Baptist to a plate of fish with hot sauce. <laughs> you can't make this shit up, man. Anyway, you see you see the information right there on your screen. Okay, so is 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 Nas is he a, a Hamite? Is Nas a Hamite? Huh? ISUPK? Which one of you clowns will step up and say, "Oh, that's it. Nas is a Hamite." Man, Nas will wrap circles around you. Probably knock you out. Because Nas is a street kid, man. Nas ain't no joke, man. And I'm not even into rap like that. And I like I like uh, some of the stuff that Nas has done. Okay, I ain't talking about little Nas X. That that dude is a, that dude is an alien. All right, I'm talking about Nas, the rapper Nas that you see right here. Let me blow up the, this dude right here, right here, Nas. Okay, you get it? All right, so. Now I got some more information to back up my man, Bakwa Moff. I told you I'd back you up, brother. And this is the video. This is from, and I'll put the, the link in the comment section as you see the comments going up. So, so you can click and, and go to this. You brothers can do videos on this. Afroculture.net. Check this out. 39 black celebrities, which were not black with different shades of brown. 39 so-called black celebrities in Hollywood with Nigerian origin. And then you see the pictures. The guy on the far left, that's Forrest Whitaker. You're going to tell me he's a Hamite? Come on, Forrest. This man played, uh, he, he acted, he was the star of uh, the movie uh, uh, Ghost Dog. How many of you brothers out there have seen the movie Ghost Dog? Excellent movie. Forrest Whitaker, man. A big time Hollywood celebrity. Okay. He's, he's, you're going to tell me he's a Hamite? How about Sade in the middle? All right, she's had many hits. I remember when Charlie first came out. I, a matter of fact, I bought an album, uh, Diamond Life. That album dropped in what early 1985. Okay, you know back then Charlie man, whew, 
you want to talk about sexy. And with that, that sexy British accent, man, the voice is kind of raspy, you know? <laughs> now I got affinity for the so-called British ladies, you know? <laughs> Sade was one of them, all right? Sade, all right? Uh, the, the actor on the uh, right, Chiwetel Ijufofo, Ijufo? I guess that's how you pronounce it, Chiwetel Ijufo. Okay, you've seen him uh, act alongside Denzel Washington in a couple of movies, okay? I guess he's a Hamite, right? You guys are retarded, man. You guys at ISUPK, you're just simply retarded. How about the actor, you recognize him, the actor on the far right there, Danny Glover? So let's read it, let's read it. 39 black celebrities in Hollywood with Nigerian origin. In the entertainment industry of Hollywood, there are many black celebrities of African descent. At first, people think they are black Americans, but they are also Nigerians by their descendants. Ooh. Following the African American Lives broadcast by PBS, many celebrities and Afro American personalities will do DNA tests to discover their, their African origins. The stars on this list were born in Nigeria and grew up overseas. Wow. While others were born and raised outside the country. Nevertheless, they have, they have one or both Nigerian parents. Others have done DNA tests to find out their origins. And number one is Sade, as you see here. All right, Sade. She was so-called British. Nigerian. Her father was Nigerian. Her, her mother was British. Okay, that's that explains why she has the look that she has. Then you have Forrest Whitaker. Look at that. Nigeria. Igbo. Oh, Igbo. Igbo people. And I believe Igbo goes back to Eber. All right. We have to do a little research on that. Ig, Igbo. Another way of saying Hebrew or Hebrew. There you go. Forrest Whitaker. All right. Let's read it. Forrest Whitaker is an American actor, director, and producer. His ancestors come from Nigeria. So is he a Hamite, uh, ISUPK? Huh? Uh, specifically, they are in the village of uh, Niwere. Niwere. I guess that how, that's how you would pronounce it. Uh, Forrest Whitaker went to the land... Of these ancestors, Forrest Whitaker received on that day the honorary title of chief. Oh, forget about it, man. <laughs> Maybe the brother Yashalom can do a video on that. He might be able to pronounce that way better than me. Uh, means a brother in foreign land. Uh, oh, a brother in foreign land. What, what, is, what comes to mind? The Israelite foreigners? Huh? You know, the so-called Jamaicans, they love to say that. If you come from America, you know, and you go to Jamaica, is it, they look at you, is, is it, where, where are you from? You're, fu you're from far in? You're far in? <laughs> yeah, man, they look at you, is it, if you come from either England or America, they look at you, and they can tell, man, it's like a spiritual thing. They look at you, you know, you go down to Kingston or, or, or one of, you know, yeah, Kingston or the, the city parts of Jamaica, and they'll just look at you and say, wait, where you from? You're from far in? You're, far, you're from far in? <laughs> All right. So there you go, man. There you go. Uh, let's move on. Oh, Danny Glover. Come on. Danny Glover. Apostle Tar been saying this about Danny Glover. Well, here's the proof. Danny Glover, Nigeria. Let's read a little about, about Danny Glover. Danny Glover is an American actor, director, and political activist his ancestors come from Niger. Come on, man. Is wait a minute. ISUPK. Is this man a Hamite? Huh? Stop it, man. Stop it. Stop the bullshit. Danny Glover is an American actor, director, and political activist. His ancestors come from Nigeria. Danny Glover visits Ni visits Nigeria at least three times a year. Three times a day. As an inside joke. That's from the movie, uh, the the How Did They Fall? I think it's called. Um, Danny Glover met actor Forrest Whitaker in Nigeria. The two actors went together to you see the name Village 
in the state of Imo, eastern Nigeria. They were greeted warmly by the local population. On that day, the two companions received honorary titles. Okay, so there you go. Here's the next one. Chiwetel Ijefor. Ijefor. All right, or Ejefor. Chiwetel Ejefor. Nigeria Igbo people. Look at that. You can see the spirit on the man. He ain't no, Im uh, no Hamite. Okay. Uh, born in the UK or raised in the UK by the Nigerian parents of the Igbo tribe. And he starred in the movie 12 Years a Slave. Okay. As a matter of fact, he was the star of that movie. 12 Years a Slave. It was based upon a real man. I forgot the man's name. Somebody can put it in the comment section. Uh, Tao Cruz is another example. I don't know too much about him. Is a British singer born in London. Okay, his father is Nigerian and his mother is Bra Brazilian. Brazil. Okay, you recognize this guy. He was in the movie Get Rich, Die. Uh, how's that go? Get Rich, Die or Try and something like that. Something like that, which is supposed to be based upon the life of uh, Curtis Fifty Cent Jackson. Right? This man starred in the movie. I believe he played his father or something like that. I, I don't remember. But he was in the movie. Okay? Adewele. Uh, Adewele. Um, <laughs> uh, it's like a mouthful, man. But that's a Nigerian name. That's a Nigerian name. Okay? Well, he's is he a is he a Hamite? ISUPK, huh? Actor of the series Oz and and Lost was born in Washington D.C. of Nigerian parents. There you go. And you have this guy here. You can see this guy. He looks like a, a Jake from down south, man. This dude right here. Come on, man. Kazim was born a British actor of Nigerian origin. All right, uh, chameleon there. He's supposed to be a rapper, I think. Uh, he was born in Houston, Texas. Is an American rapper. And a rapper, an entrepreneur of 31 years, said, uh, said his father's originally from Lagos, Nigeria. There you go. Reminds me of the song by uh, Third World, Legos Jump. That's a bad song, man. Legos, Legos Jump. Da -da -da, da -da -da. I think the song is by um, Third World. Uh, Wale, Nigeria, Yoruba people. Look at that. Look at this cat. This cat look like, 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 come on, man. Is he a Hamite? This dude look like one of them, one of them jakes you see. Uh, Throwing up them gang signs and, and you know, repping South Central Los Angeles, man. Come on, man. Yo, what set you rolling with, foe? That's what they, they, come on. ISUPK, stop it. Stop it. Stop the bullshit. All right? Look, he has a Nigerian name. He's an American rapper born September 21st, 1984 in Washington. His parents are of Yoruba of the state of Ogun. Look at that, man. Stop the bullshit, ISUPK. Look at this guy. Tyler, the creator. You heard of him. Uh, his, his real name is Tyler Okonma. Okon, 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 Okonma was born on March 6, 1991 in Los Angeles, California. His father is a, Nige a Nigerian and his, and his Canadian mother. Here's another example. There's a pretty chick right here. Uh, British actress Ashley Made Madekwe, I guess that's how you say it, was born to was born in London to a Nigerian father and English mother. Same thing with Sade. Alright, another example there. You can see, look at the nigger woman spirit on her. You gonna tell me she's a Hamite? You can see the, the, the nigger woman spirit on her, man. She's a British act British Nigerian actress. You know what I mean by nigga woman. You can you can tell that spirit is that spirit is beaming off of her, man. Look at her. All right, you can tell by the look. Tells you that near Parkville, man may be known by his look. 
by his countenance. Another example. All right, another example. Uh, Nigerian father and an and a English mother. Check that out. Another example, you've seen her in the, the, the show, uh, what is that? Uh, Orange is the New Black. Some of you might have watched that show. You've, you've seen this woman. She's of Nigerian origin. Well, yeah. Nigerian. These parents are Nigerians of Igbo origin. All right, look at my man right here. Come on, this dude like looked like a straight-up Jake, man. You wouldn't know that his background was Nigerian if he didn't tell you. ISUPK, you need to stop it, man. I'm telling you. Remember, Matthew 12 and 36, every idle word. And you're trying to corrupt the faith of brothers who are in the truth, whose background happens to be of so-called Nigeria. Now, how about Shimei Asha going to put a stop to your mouths, man? Look at this. Look at this chick. Another example. Another British actress, actress whose parents are Nigerian. Look at this guy. I've seen him before in movies. Okay. Look at her, man. Come on, man. Is she a Hamite? Oh, she looking. She looking. She looking kind of good too. I like them dark skinned chicks. Uh. There you go. Look at this dude. His father is uh, was as far as Nigerian. His mother's Norwegian. That explains his look. He looked like he could be a tear, but this guy here, but he's not because his father is Nigerian and his mother's Norwegian. Oh, you've seen her. You've seen this woman. She was in one of the Purge movies. All right. Carmen Elizabeth e Ejogo. Ejogo. Okay. Let's see what she's working with. All right, Nigerian father and Scottish mother. Okay, that explains her look. She's Scottish. And a lot of the Scots, they're Jake, man. Sean Connery, my man, Sean Connery. That dude was definitely a Jake. John Boyega. He was in the Star Wars, trip, or one of those Star Wars flicks. Look at him. Is he, is he a Hamite, ISUPK? <laughs> you guys need to quit, man. Look at her. Got that, she got that chocolate beauty working. Okay, okay. Look at her. She got that half cast beauty working. That's how they call them in England, light skin, half cast. The British brothers, you'd know about that. Okay, look at her. Her background is Nigerian. Is she, is she a Hamite, ISUPK? A lot of you ISUPK cats, you'd love to get with a chick like that. You wouldn't tell her, you're a Hamite. Get away from me. You a Hamite. You guys need to stop it, man. Just stop it. Stop the bullshit. Look at this dude. Oh, I remember him, Donald Faison. His background is Nigerian. And if you listen to him talk, man, you'd never know. You'd never have any idea. And his brother, too. I think they have his, yep, that's his brother right there. And he has a Nigerian name. Ola, Ola, Mide Faison. Faison. There you go. So we made the point, okay? So I'm almost at an hour. I didn't intend for the video to go that long, but hopefully you were edified by it. And once again, man, uh, go check my brother out over here. Bakwa Amaf. Subscribe to his channel. He does excellent edifying videos. It covers multitude of topics like, you know, begin to fail the possible on down like we do here at GMS. So go check his, his channel out, Bukwa Maf. And for now, I say Shalom. On to the next one.